Hello, hello everyone. This is Liz Schultes from Harmony Kai, the Shamanic Witch. I know a lot of the audios that I've uploaded before were of podcasts that I was the one being interviewed. So this time we have a little something different. Today, I'll be the one asking the questions and our guest is none other than then Vicki Ellie of Divinely Aligned Intuitive Readings and Healings. Vicki is an evidential medium, an integrated energy therapist, as well as a master instructor. I hope you all enjoy hearing about Vicki, her business, and how she uses her gifts to help the people around her. I just want to take a moment to apologize to the listeners for any changes in the way this audio sounds versus the interview. We did have to change mediums in order to conduct the interview. (laughs) I said medium, pun intended. Okay, so without further ado, here we go. Oh, hi, Vicki. Hi, Liz. (laughs) Um, So... First off, could you explain what it means to be an intuitive evidential medium? Absolutely. So for me, if you come to me for a reading, um, I'm using my intuition. But with intuition comes what I like to call clairs. And those are things like clairaudience, where you're you're hearing spirit, clairvoyance, where you can see auras. Um, For me, doing a psychic reading, it's almost like I'm watching a TV screen in my mind. Um, Sometimes when I'm doing a reading, I'll see things next to people or I'll feel like they're coming at me. Like once I was doing a reading at Lilydale and I was reading a woman who was training to be a spiritualist minister. When she sat down with me, I didn't know that. And I looked at her and when she sat down, a cross came out from the side of her and flew at me. And I said, okay, Jesus is really important to you. What's with you and Jesus? And she said, well, I'm training to become a spiritualist minister right now. And I said, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. So yeah. you're talking about um, doing readings um, and being at Lilydale. Tell me about your mm-hmm. business. So my business, um, I started my business in 2018. Um, before that, I had been doing, you know, readings kind of sporadically with tarot on the side. Um, In 2017, I went through a traumatic breakup. The following week, a friend of mine came over to help me clean out all of my ex-boyfriend's stuff out of my apartment. And she sat down and she said, will you read my tarot cards? Because I had my tarot cards. And I said, yeah, I'll do your tarot cards. And then I was reading her tarot cards and she looked at me and she said, Vicki, if I show you a picture, will you tell me what's going on in the person's life? And I said, well, I've never done this before, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. So I did that. um, And she said, everything I I said about the man that, that I was looking at was spot on. So it's kind of like people always say, oh, I never meant to fall into this. Well, no, I didn't. I had an interest in it, but I didn't mean to just start reading people that day. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So um, people say very often that they didn't mean to fall into this, but um, it just kind of works that way. When when we're ready, spirit will call you. Mm -hmm. So before I started my business, I had taken integrated energy therapy class. I learned it because um, both my parents were going through a lot physically. um, And... The woman who my teacher um, told me that she was learning it and she told me that you're attuned to a violet ray when you do integrated energy therapy. Um, And I said, wow, I said, um, she said with with Reiki, it's a white ray. And I thought, wow, you can't get any higher than violet. So, yeah, I thought, wow, this must be really, really healing and she said you know i'm working you're working with the angels the energy of the angels um and so i just felt a really strong calling that i needed to do this okay. so when i say i'm an intuitive and evidential medium it means that information comes to me in evidence um so i can see auras and like i said it's like watching a movie screen in my mind um but also with that 
everything kind of just comes to me, like kind of like in a claircognizant kind of way as well. So I do, I get claircognizance. Um, I get clairvoyance. I get, um, <laughs> I think it's called clairgustance, the clear tasting, which can be weird. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. That's always weird. <laughs> um, and you know, obviously Claire audience and uh, Claire sentience, which can be scary as well yes. when you're sitting there and you feel like you're going to have a heart attack. <laughs> yes. Um, but, you know, and then like when they, you know, want to tell you how they died and they had like an aneurysm or something and it's painful. Mm -hmm. So people don't always know what that's like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I do, I get, I get, you know, evidence in those different ways. Sometimes I just know them, but I can also see auras and things like that. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of covered number two as well. Oh, cool. <laughs> the second question. Yeah. So um, what, could you share a memorable experience from your childhood where you first recognized your gifts? Like when did you first start noticing things were happening? Um, so when I was a kid, I used to see colors around people and I didn't know what that meant. And I didn't tell anybody. I just thought everybody did that. Yeah. And, uh, I also remember, um, being just a kid and, you know, I grew up Catholic, like a lot of us. Mm -hmm. And, um, my, I remember asking my grandma when I was like three or four years old, I said, grandma, are angels real? And she said, yeah, of course, angels are real. And then, you know, at night, my dad would be watching the original Star Trek on TV. And I was like, you know, three, four years old. I said to my dad one night, dad, are there aliens? Uh, <laughs> I'm like three, four years old <laughs> asking about aliens. Nice. And he didn't really answer me. But I mean, how do you answer that to a four-year-old? Exactly. Exactly. Right. So, um, so that was part of it. Um, the other part of it was, um, when I was 16, this is really a big turning point in my story. My grandmother passed away. Mm -hmm. Um, she had a big stroke and then she had several small strokes after that and heart attacks, oh. um, over the next, maybe about six weeks, Yeah, six to seven weeks. She just it was like she just progressed after the first stroke um it was beyond you know um being in rehab she was her organs were shutting down yeah um so the first stroke that she had and i think she had several after that um I had a dream about two weeks before she had the stroke okay. and I had the same dream two nights in a row. Um, in the first dream, I shook her and I said, grandma, grandma, wake up. And she woke up the second night. I had the exact same dream where she collapsed and I said, grandma, grandma, wake up. And she didn't wake up. Mm. So that's when I kind of, new but I also started blaming myself for it right because I felt really guilty so I didn't tell anyone until maybe my early 30s oh wow it's a long time to hold on to something yeah yep mm. thank you for sharing that yeah um so what, well, I think you kind of talked about what inspired you, uh, to develop your skills. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, did you have any mentors that shaped your practice at all? Yes. Um, I have a couple of them. Um, the, well, I'll talk about what inspired me also. I mean, my grandmother is my huge inspiration, Right. You know what I mean? I feel like spirit was talking to me directly in that dream. And so right. that was a big inspiration for me. Um, my mentors, uh, my first mentor was uh, my integrated energy therapy teacher, Kathleen Quinn is her name. Okay. Um, she's really a wonderful person. Um, she, I went to her for a reading the first time 
Um, and she said to me, you're getting a dog and this dog is smiling at you. Oh. And my dog smiles all the time. And two weeks later, I adopted my dog. So, mm-hmm. yeah. So um, she's been a huge mentor to me. She's always been there for me. Um, you know, and after I went to her for that psychic reading, I went to her for an integrated energy therapy clearing and I sent my parents to her. Um, I'm very protective of them. So for me to send someone to my, my parents to someone is kind of a big deal. Um, so, um, she's been a huge mentor to me. Um, another mentor that I have is Lisa Williams. Um, Yep. She was my teacher. I took her six month course um, and she was just wonderful the whole time. She's one of the most encouraging teachers that I've had. Um, Otherwise, I had another mentor as well. Um, He's passed away now. Um, His name was George Corey. He was very respected in the community. Um, He was a great tarot teacher. Um. He was 69 when he died. He had been reading cards since he was 16. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, When I had my first circle by myself over at Mocha Lisa's cafe, um, he came to my circle. He drove up here from the Catskills and came to my circle. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. It was a huge support system to me. Um, and just him, and he was good friends with Lisa Williams, actually. She went to his funeral and spoke at his funeral. Yeah. Um, but he was just one of the best. And I know he's still around me a lot. Guiding I me. My next question was if you if you still are in contact with him, if he still makes contact. Kind of a oh, subject. yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> but that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, he is wonderful. Um, and you know, my IET teacher has been wonderful with everything. Um, she's always been right there for me. Um, and I hope to be the same to my students. You know what I mean? Um, and who else has been great? Um, Lisa, I gotta be honest with you. Cindy was a good teacher, but I don't know that she's a great mentor. Right. Right. She's a bit more detached. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So can you, what led you to specialize in tarot and oracle cards in addition to mediumship? So I actually started all this stuff reading tarot cards when I like intentionally wanted to start it. Yeah. Um, My friend who does my hair introduced me to my IET teacher. Mm -hmm. And when I was 30 years old, I said to her, because she had been reading cards since she was like, my friend, her name's Kirsten. uh, She had been reading cards since she was like, 14, 15 years old. And I used to have like little tarot cards that I got like in a teen magazine that they were giving out like in the magazines and I would play with them. Yeah. And um, so she, and then, you know, I got rid of everything for a while. Um, So she gave me my first deck of tarot cards when I was 30. When I turned 30, she gave me my first deck. It was the Hanson Roberts tarot. Um, and it has the name of each of the cards in, you know, French, English, Italian um, on them. And the cards, they, I mean, they do talk and they, um, they're differently drawn from the Rider Waite deck. Okay. Um, we, we call them in that deck, they're called rods instead of wands. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's still a really beautiful deck. Um, so I actually started all of this reading cards. So I started with cards and then the mediumship started to come in after I got attuned to IET and, um, you know, continued with the cards. Excuse me. What's interesting is that, um, so that's kind of what inspired me. I, um, you know, I just kind of specialized in cards because I picked them up really fast. Mm-hmm. And it's, an you know, a lot of people read more intuitively, whereas some people say like, okay, this is the four of swords. It means to take a rest. Um, a lot of people would read intuitively and say like, okay, maybe your thoughts have been negative. 
um, recently since the swords are pointing down. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's time to make a change to rest and meditate and maybe try to make a change to maybe get your thoughts to more positive place where the swords are pointing up. Do you know what I mean? I do. And I know personally, when I read, I like to tell my clients what the card is, right? I have the tarot knowledge. So I'm like, this is a four swords. This is what the card, this is what the cards mean. This is what it means. (laughs) but this is what I'm getting from it. Right. So I'm yep. like, this is, it means that it's time to take a rest. It means rest and to, you know, <laughs> but for you, I feel like this card is saying that you have been extending yourself in this area of your life or this yep. area of your life. And yep. so it's warning you that if you don't, you know, then it's going to, you're going to be forced. It's going to force you to take. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I very much understand. Like, yeah, I like, I like, personally like integrating the knowledge of the tarot with the intuitive I like bringing those two together so I do too yeah and I like to read them as more like symbols and telling a story about the card exactly like you know, if you think about the name or the number on the card and then the symbol and then you look at the colors in the card and what the people are doing and you know even the different animals on the cards mm-hmm. have a message to give yeah, you and I have a mutual friend that could turn a one card reading into a 45 minute session because there's just she's so capable of unpacking every single card. So that's uh, it's Miss Heather. <laughs> I was gonna say that's got to be either Heather or Tiffany. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So she can pull one card and give you a full reading off of one card and be like this and that and then this and with the moon and the sun and the position and this number and the numerology and the element that it's associated with. And, you know, <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. And that's how you do it. You know right, what I mean? Right. It's more than just it's more than just, I mean, I even look at the colors on the card and what's going on in the background and yeah. you know what I mean? And what those colors mean to me, you know yeah. what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the way you got to do it. So mm-hmm. I, I applaud that. Um, I had a sub question. You were, t- you mentioned that you were in your thirties when mm-hmm. you started doing this. What are your thoughts? <laughs> on the phenomena that many people aren't getting into this until they are in their 30s that you have you, you have two groups of people you have the ones that have been doing it like myself the ones that have been doing it their whole life yep. and then you have this other group where all of a sudden once they hit 30 something just clicked in their mind and they decided to go for it what, what are your thoughts on that so I think it has to do with where you are and I think it has to do with conditioning mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, I was brought up very Catholic. I had to go to church every week. I, you know, um, unless it was like hell or high water. Um, and you know, I spent a lot of time with my grandparents and it was really important that we did that every week. Yeah. Um, so I think I knew always that there was something to this. Um, I did have a Ouija board growing up. (laughs) Um, when I was in my later teens, my dad kind of felt like it was bringing us bad luck. So he threw it out. I wasn't mad at him about it. I was just like, okay, whatever. Um, and it's possible because kids don't know what they're doing when they're playing with a Ouija board. Right. (laughs) Um, so it's very possible, but I think that it has to do with how you were brought up. Yeah. And I feel like it has to do with like your root work. For me, I always knew that psychicism was real. Mm-hmm. And I, I know, and I just knew it. And well, also because of my life experiences, right. I think that we're conditioned in our especially late teens, early 20s to shut all that stuff off. You need to go make something of yourself for the 3D. Right. Yeah. So you need to go make something of yourself and make money and support yourself in mm-hmm. your 20s. So I think that we have to shut it. We have to shut it off to conform to society for the time that we need to. Right. And then I think what happens is in our late 20s, early 30s, that's when it happened to, for me. Some people, it's even later, though. Mm-hmm. I know. Um, for me, it was my late 20s, early 30s. I started saying, like, OK, there's more to life than this. Yeah. And I know there's more to life than this. 
And, you know, that's when I kind of started meditating a little bit and I learned about what Reiki was. Um, I think that you have to go through a traumatic event or several to get that place where you're like, all right, what is this? Why, why has all this happened? What is the cause of this? It can't just be me. (laughs) Yeah. And yeah. yeah. And I think that's why some of us are lifers is because, you know, like myself uh, went through a very traumatic experience at an extremely vulnerable age. And yeah, yeah, I think it all depends on when that happens and your conditioning. And so I very Mm -hmm. much agree. So we kind of discussed about the spiritualist approach and how it influences your readings. Um, Oh, yeah. When I do readings, this is not about me. This is about spirit coming through. Yeah. Yeah. We talked about Cindy and Lisa a little bit and how Mm -hmm. they relate to your work. How do you approach teaching others about tarot, oracle cards, and integrated energy therapy? Okay. One thing that's huge for me when I tell other people about reading tarot, and I'm sure for you too, I tell people, listen, the cards are only picking up your path right now. Right. If you were to continue on this path, you have free will. Mm -hmm. So you can change your path at any time. So the outcome could be affected. Right. Absolutely. Every single step you take changes your fate. So yes, absolutely. When I teach people integrated energy therapy, it's a lot different because it's like, okay, you're taking on the consciousness of angels now. Right. I teach them, they know that everything is for the highest healing. Most of the people that I've taught, either have been through integrated energy therapy healings or have had some experience with Reiki or something like that. When it comes to integrated energy therapy, I want people to know that I'm a guide and that this is going to be their experience with channeling angels and feeling all the synchronicities and things like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's not about me. It's about me serving the angels. And that's a great segue to how do the nine healing angels come into play with the integrated energy therapy? So when you're attuned to integrated energy therapy, you're also attuned to the nine healing angels of the energy field. Mm -hmm. So those angels, I can tell you a few of them. Archangel Michael is one. Archangel Raphael is one. And Archangel Gabriel is one. Okay. So those are like three of the big, you know, archangels that you always hear about. Yeah. Um, So those angels, I mean, it really, since you become attuned to them, you you feel a stronger connection to them. Okay. And they'll help to guide you with your intuition as well. They'll show you signs and synchronicities like you wouldn't be able to believe. And actually, it's weird. Right now, my hands are feeling electric. (laughs) And that happens when I do healings on people. So when you start to work with them and you take them on and you ask them to work with you and through you, you'll start to notice that you're more guided in your life. And you're like, this is what's right for my soul. And this is not good for my soul. It's very like, nothing is ever black and white. But you'll understand that you'll under you'll see more signs when you're more in alignment. Yeah. And you'll see less signs when you're not in alignment. Sometimes it kind of feels like maybe they throw more like four, four, fours at you because they're like, listen, you're gonna be okay. We got you, even though you're going through some shit. So side note here, I yep. think you were talking about how your hands were vibrating and electric and you do that when you're healing. I, I kind of think that that's what's happening right here because I have a lot of deep seated issues with the Judo Christian religion. And so we start talking about when you start talking about angels and, and capital G God, it, it stirs feelings of unease. I know that the Judo Christian religion and its philosophies and its prejudices ha- are fallacy of man and not. Yeah. You know. Oh yeah. So yeah, I'm, that's bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So I think you're you're vibrating because you're healing me. This is healing. <laughs> this is helping. Good. <laughs> so what do you feel distinguishes integrated energy therapy from other healing modalities? 
integrated energy therapy works gently to release the issues out of your tissues that we store in our, our cellular memory. I like that. And it's very gentle. Like, so it uses angelic energy. Whereas sometimes, even if you have a shamanic healing, like, yes, spirit is only going to give you what you need. But even sometime with it, sometimes with a shamanic healing, it can be a bit jarring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. This is much more gentle. But it's also important with this healing to check in with yourself too. Yes. And that's a great segue into what result can a client typically expect after a private psychic medium reading with you? Normally people come through and they feel, I like it when at the end, when people say, I feel much more at peace or you provided validation for me. Okay. Because I get a lot of people that come through are like, I'm feeling like this. I feel like this is my mother and I'm seeing this cardinal and this is the sign and this and that. And, um, and I'm like, yeah, like what inside of you is so resistant of to this? Yeah. So I look at people and, you know, like, like our friend, our mutual friend is a shadow worker. Like I can see through and say, what's your block? And yeah. we can work with those things and say, okay, how can you go in and change it? How can you reframe? So that's really part of what I do too, is coaching people to get to where they need to be. Right, right. Mm -hmm. that's, that is the key part right there, is that yeah. it, it's not just about healing through energy and through psychic stuff. It's about coaching and helping the person walk to the solution yes. that are going to improve their life. Yep. Uh, so you offer a range of services from private sessions to Zoom gatherings. How, if at all, does the energy transfer differ in person versus a remote session? So a remote session is obviously different because we're not face to face. Right. You know, honestly, sometimes I feel like the energy is even stronger in a remote session. Agreed. Yes. Yes. Because everything that we do is intention. So mm -hmm. um, I think both are equally powerful. Um, I love doing both. Um, but I think that sometimes even in a remote session is even stronger. And I don't know why that is. It could just be because I'm sitting in my own energy and communing with the spirits and angels. I was going to say, I feel like the remote sessions are stronger because yeah. you're both more focused on what's happening in the ethereal plane instead of what's happening on the physical plane. Um, yeah. A lot more focus to pull yourself out of that moment and put yourself into the astral plane. Um, yep. Actually physically hands-on with somebody as opposed to when you're uh, you're able to get into a deep Theta, theta meditative state and so your your body is not focused on what it needs to be doing it's it's relaxed and your your spirit your light body is in the astral realm in the ethereal plane and so and yep. so is the other person so instead of having to focus on I have to fart <laughs> <laughs> I should hold this you know you're right exactly relaxed, you know yeah exactly it's a little bit more yeah yeah, you know, because yeah. our, our meat suits are constantly calculating things all the time. So if we put ourselves in a situation where we don't have to, then we can focus greater uh, amounts of energy um, on doing on doing the healing work. So that was yeah. my theory. Anyway, so yeah, I, I agree with that. So what exactly is a treatment with a reading? And how do you integrate this into a session? So what I normally do with an IET session with a reading is we go through, we set an intention for your IET session, what you want to heal, shift, clear, release, or manifest. And then I go through and I do the session. And afterwards, I sit with you for about half an hour and I do a reading. So I basically, I'll tell you what energy I picked up, what came out and what 
to kind of work with going forward, but I also can pick up the different spirits that may have been present during your IET session. So yes, the angels come through, but at times people's ancestors and animal guides come through. Sometimes people, um, sometimes the angels tell me like what crystals they want people to work with. And sometimes I'll actually see a person's trauma. Yeah. And where it's stored. Yeah. yeah. So I help them with that. That I remember from a session I had with you because you yeah. were hyper focused on my kidneys and I was like, I've been having a lot of kidney issues. <laughs> yep. So yeah. you know, that's where I store all my 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 bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> What common obstacles do people face with manifestation and how do you assist them in the law of attraction coaching? I think that a really common obstacle that people face when it comes to manifestation is not feeling worthy and deserving of their manifestation. That's it right there. That is it. Yep. Um, in the entrepreneur world, we call that the imposter syndrome. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yep. And I think that's really our biggest block is that self-love saying, oh yeah, you know what? I deserve a good guy or I deserve to have this promotion or I deserve to move out into a bigger house or whatever it is that you want, you deserve it because everything that you that is telling you that you don't is just your own thoughts and your own mind playing tricks on you. Right, yes. Yeah. It's passed down from you, to you from- previous- Generations, yeah. <laughs> And the IET, the integrated energy therapy helps to clear that generational trauma as well. Nice. Yeah. Beautiful. In your opinion, what is the most powerful aspect of helping others align with the divine? Watching them and watching them come back to me and say, not just, not even that I was right, because it's not about being right. It's watching people being able to live their life with more joy and less fear and less trauma holding them back from what they're what they deserve. And you mentioned joy, freedom and alignment as outcomes of your session. Can you elaborate on how those are achieved? A little bit a little bit deeper. We went into like block yeah. stuff, but let's take a nice big bite out of that if you don't mind. No problem. Um, So my favorite part of this is what we're doing when we clear out your cells, these cellular memory areas on your body, is we're changing the consciousness of your cells. Okay. We're changing the consciousness of the cellular memory area. So like, so for example, our heart is where we would store in this system, we would store betrayal, abuse, and heartache so if we put in divine love like the energy of love from the angels we're going to go through you know we clear it out and as a result people experience more joy Mm -hmm. they feel more freedom like okay i don't have to stay stuck in these thought patterns because that energy is gone now nice yeah in what ways do you continue to learn and grow in your in your field and in your practice well, um, I love learning about different modalities of energy. Over time, I've noticed doing integrated energy therapy, like we talked about, like the angels come in. But over time, I've noticed that different consciousness comes in for me too. Okay. Ancestors come in and spirit animals will come in and just different modes of consciousness, even crystals will come in. Nice. So over time, as I've done it, I notice more opening up because, and also because of the different aspects of the different angels and what they take care of. Yeah. So for someone who is brand new to this kind of spiritual work, somebody that knows nothing of healing and nothing of angels through media and stuff, what would you suggest as a starting point uh, to experience these services? Um, I would start with a psychic reading, um, since we can kind of go through and identify the blocks. And if we see traumas, then I would, I would suggest an integrated energy therapy session. I'm not the kind of person who says, and you know, these, 
for lack of a better word, gypsy psychics who are like, you need to come to me for 17 sessions after this. And you have so many blockages to clear to get you. I can't do that to people. That's not the way we work. So um, I would start with a psychic medium session. And if the traumas come up, then I would usually suggest an integrated energy therapy session as well. Okay, very cool. So last and definitely not least, what are your thoughts on modern paganism? What are my thoughts on modern paganism? Well, you know, I have to say that I'm happy that it's coming back Mm -hmm. um, because I feel like organized religion has put too much man in in the man has gotten in the way of what what they want what they call god or spirit or great spirit or source really wants us to know right because man wanted to manipulate this into what man wanted it to be to control people exactly um i wholeheartedly agree there is um, a passage uh not necessarily in like the bible but in organized religion where they were like um he who pursues knowledge um he who gains knowledge also gains in grief right so that's kind of like trying to keep people ignorant you know um yeah so and not reach for knowledge and not learn and and not ask questions right exactly so if you can if you can create fear around learning Mm -hmm then you can in fact uh control an entire um empire yep Mm -hmm. we're seeing a lot of that in the in the u.s right now indeed indeed um but my thoughts on modern paganism is if you're interested in it go for it right um i like to keep my work in the light for the most part but if i if i have to kind of go to the other side of things uh to kind of get something done i will i'm definitely not into you know cursing people or anything but i do think that we should be worshiping the earth and i do think that we should be protecting the earth because the earth takes care of us and where do we return at the end we return to the earth right so i very much agree with modern paganism um but i also think it's important to keep focused on the light for the most part and not get too deep into the shadow side of things or into using it for a vengeful way. Would you classify paganism as being in the shadow as opposed to the light? Not at all. Not at all. Okay. And for you personally and your theology and your, Mm -hmm. um, your pantheon, Um, Mm -hmm. how would you describe your faith and your practice? Um, I would call myself spiritualist. Um, you know, I very much agree with a lot of shamanic practices. I agree with witchcraft, um, you know, everything done in the light. I agree with banishing things if we need to. Um, but I look at my practice as spiritualist based because I'm focusing on service to spirit first. How can I open myself and be of service to the angels? And one thing I want to say, I don't think we covered, um, the angels aren't just Judeo Christian. They're also Muslim. Right. But I also want to say that in integrated energy therapy, the main angel that I'm attuned to is Angel Ariel. She's also in charge of all the fae on the earth. Ah, very nice. So, yeah. So any of the elemental spirits, the earth spirits and the fae, she's in charge of. So it does go along with paganism. And I think that people are quick to classify angels as Catholic. And that's not necessarily the way. No, 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 not. There's like a lot of Christian religions, um, venerate angels and a lot of, like you said, Muslim religions. I'm not educated enough about Islamic to speak on that, but I know that uh, there's a lot of similarities between angels Mm -hmm. and some of the gods and goddesses 
that mm -hmm. are of other pantheons. So, so yeah, absolutely. I wholeheartedly agree with yeah. you. So, yeah. I think, honestly, the angels are more Jewish than they are Christian. I agree. Yeah, well, that's where everything came from. So Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And Angel Gabriel was the, the angel who was channeled when Muhammad wrote the Quran. Right. <laughs> so that's pretty important she's the she slash he is the angel that is the angel in charge of giving messages and i think that the pagan aspect of it is that ariel angel ariel is one the angel in charge of mediumship two she's the angel in charge of everything on the planet and also the fey so i think that's the pagan aspect of this system yeah um so we are working with the elementals. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah absolutely. Mm -hmm. Was there anything you would like to add? And also, could you tell us how to get in touch with you? Absolutely. Anything I'd like to add? Not really. I, I do want to say that the more you ask your angels, the more signs they'll give you and the more they'll communicate with you. Mm -hmm. But I think that's really it. Otherwise, how can people get a hold of me? They can go to my website, www.vicisdivinelyaligned.com. Mm -hmm. And you can fill out the contact form. And I can do remote integrated energy therapy sessions or remote readings as well, or both. I do them in person if you follow my Facebook page. And my Facebook page is Divinely Aligned Intuitive Readings and Healings by Vicki L. So... Well, thank you so much for this interview. It Ew. was wonderful <laughs> diving deep into your practice and into your healing modalities and uh, getting to know a lot more about you. So, uh, thank, so you. thank you so much. Thank you. I'm excited. Okay, guys, that was Vicki Laubier of Divinely Aligned with Vicki L. You can find links to her website and social media in the video. Don't forget to give the like and subscribe buttons a little energy. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Bye.